Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at the dehaze feature in Lightroom CC. Now this technology is also available if you're using Camera Raw and Photoshop CC. The dehaze technology, it's based on a physical model of how light's transmitted, and it tries to estimate light that is lost due to the absorption and scattering through the atmosphere. So if I move to the effects panel in the develop module and move the dehaze slider to the right, it's like we're cutting through any haze or smog, and you can see how the mountains get clearer and clearer. All right, let's move to the next image. I'll use the right arrow here. And in this case, I don't actually want to add any dehaze because although it does give me a nice silhouette, I actually prefer in this instance to decrease the amount of dehaze. You can see that it's actually lightening up those shadow areas. I'm getting kind of this interesting soft glow around the edge of the building, and I'm getting this very dramatic orange-yellow sunset. So it's not only used to remove dehaze, but it can also be used to add dehaze. All right, moving to the next image. When I use the dehaze slider here globally, the problem is, is that I'm losing all of the detail in the rocks. So let's undo that, and I'm going to move to my local adjustment tool, in this case my graduated filter, and I'll increase the dehaze amount quite significantly, and then click and drag down into the image in order to remove some of the haze and give the clouds a little bit more dramatic look. But obviously this is going way too far, so not only am I going to back off on the dehaze a little, I'm also going to decrease the amount of saturation. And if we want to preview this, I can just scroll down and flip the switch, so there's before and there's after. Excellent, let's go ahead and put the tool back and move to the final image here. In this case, I am going to use the global amount for dehaze, but I don't like the way that it's making the rocks kind of overly dramatic here. I love the sky, but not the foreground. So I'll switch to the adjustment brush here, double click effect in order to reset all of the values, and then I'm going to decrease the amount of dehaze and scroll down and make sure that Auto Mask is turned on, and then I will paint around the edges of these rocks. And the nice thing about Auto Mask is you'll notice that wherever I put those crosshairs, that's the hot spot, and Lightroom is looking for edges for me, and it's not going to jump across the edge into the sky. So once I've got the outline, then I can tap the A key in order to turn off Auto Mask so that it's a little bit faster when I paint inside this larger area of this rock. All right, moving over to the other rock, I'll tap the A again, and then start painting again around the edges, and that auto mask is helping so that the effect doesn't spill over into the sky area, or in this case, down into the water area. And I could take a little bit more time doing this, but I think this is fine for now. I will turn off the auto mask, get a little bit larger brush there, I'm just using my scroll wheel to do that, and paint here in this area of the rock. All right, now obviously I've overdone it, so let's scroll up and just remove a little bit of that dehaze there, and I might also want to come up a little bit, just increase my blacks, and maybe increase my shadows a little bit more. And if we want to see a before and after of the local adjustment, I can click on this switch to toggle before and after, or if we want to see a before and after of the whole image, I can use the backslash key, there's before and there's after. Excellent, so there you have it, four different uses for dehaze, both as a local as well as a global adjustment in Lightroom CC.